The title of this presentation is Microwave Filter Design Tutorial. The outline of this presentation is as follows. Introduction to Filters and Microwave Filters, Filter Transformations, Butterworth vs. Chibushev Filters, Stepped Impedance Filters, Coupled Line Filters, Richards Transformation, Microwave Filter Design Using Keysight Genesis. In this section, we introduce microwave filters, essential components and communication systems designed to manage and control signal transmission and reception. With the growth of technologies like satellite TV and mobile networks, understanding microwave filters is crucial. This presentation explores the core concepts, types, and principles of microwave filters. Microwave systems such as satellite and mobile networks operate at high frequencies, which often encounter interference from unwanted signals. For instance, TV receivers can pick up multiple signals simultaneously. Filters help ensure that only the desired frequencies are received, while out-of-band signals are suppressed. Filters are two-port electrical networks that pass signals within a defined frequency range, called the passband, while rejecting others in the stop band. This selective function is essential for maintaining communication quality, and filters are often placed before components like low-noise amplifiers or LNAs. The transfer function H, J omega, mathematically relates input and output signals. It's a complex expression involving inductors and capacitors, allowing engineers to design filters tailored to specific frequencies. As an example, consider a simple LC network made up of an inductor and capacitor. The impedance of these components depends on the signal frequency. By applying Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can derive the transfer function, providing insights into how this filter processes signals. There are several types of microwave filters, each with unique properties and applications. Low-pass filters, high-pass filters, band-pass filters, and band-stop filters. A low-pass filter passes signals below a certain cutoff frequency, attenuating higher frequencies. Here's a basic low-pass filter circuit with resistor R and capacitor C, allowing lower frequencies to pass through. A high-pass filter allows signals above a specific cutoff frequency to pass, while blocking lower frequencies. This example circuit features a capacitor C and resistor R, configured to let high frequencies through. A bandpass filter allows signals within a specific frequency range or band to pass while blocking frequencies outside this range. Here's an example circuit using an inductor L and capacitor C to define the passband. Also known as notch filters, bandstop filters block a specific frequency band, allowing signals outside that range to pass. This circuit combines inductors and capacitors to create a bandstop effect. The frequency response graphically represents a filter's behavior across different frequencies. For example, a low-pass filter displays a flat response in the passband, then falls off in the stop band, showing which frequencies are passed or suppressed. The behavior of filters can be mathematically modeled using impedance and transfer functions. For an LC network, the general form of the transfer function is given by the magnitude of the transfer function h of j omega is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus the square of the ratio of omega to omega c, where omega underscore c represents the cutoff frequency. At lower frequencies, where omega is almost equal to 0, the transfer function magnitude is 1. As omega approaches omega underscore c, the magnitude decreases. At very high frequencies, where omega is almost equal to infinity, the transfer function magnitude falls to 0. Microwave filters are fundamental for ensuring signal integrity in communication systems. By understanding key principles like the transfer function and frequency response, engineers can design efficient filters tailored for various applications. In this section, we'll explore filter transformations, covering the process of transforming low-pass filters into high-pass, band-pass, and band-stop filters. We'll also look at how transfer functions are manipulated to achieve the desired filtering response. Filters can be categorized into several types. Low-pass filter allows frequencies below a cutoff frequency. High-pass filter allows frequencies above a cutoff frequency. Band-pass filter passes a specific frequency range. And band-stop filter blocks a specific frequency range. To transform these types, we modify the transfer function of a low-pass filter to suit other types. To create a high-pass filter from a low-pass filter, we substitute S with 1 slash S in the transfer function. This change reverses the response, setting low frequencies to zero and allowing high frequencies to pass. This illustration shows a low-pass filter with inductors and a capacitor, transformed into a high-pass filter where inductors are replaced by capacitors and vice versa. To create a band-pass filter, 
we substitute s with s squared plus omega naught squared, all over b times s, in the transfer function. This produces a specific frequency band that the filter allows to pass. An inductor J omega L K can be transformed into a series L C circuit with values L prime equals L K over delta omega naught and C prime equals delta over omega naught times L K. This transformation allows for specific control of frequency response in bandpass filters. In this transformation, a low pass capacitor J omega C K is converted to a bandpass LC circuit, allowing selective frequency control. To create a bandstop filter, we replace S in the low pass transfer function with a modified term to introduce attenuation within a certain range. Practically, when creating a high pass filter, low pass inductors are replaced with capacitors of reciprocal values and vice versa for capacitors. This approach effectively inverts the frequency response. To summarize, for low pass to high pass, substitute S with 1 over S. For low pass to band pass, substitute S with S squared plus omega naught squared, all over B times S. Low pass to band stop, apply complementary transformations to create a band stop response. In this lecture we'll look at Chebyshev filters. These filters allow a steeper roll off than Butterworth filters, achieved by introducing ripples in the passband. Key design considerations include setting the ripple factor and selecting the filter order. Key concepts in Chebyshev filter design include the power loss ratio or PLR, is defined as PLR equals 1 plus K squared times TN squared, where TN is the Chebyshev polynomial. Other essential parameters are the operating frequency omega, measured in radians and the passband ripple LR, measured in decibels. While Butterworth filters offer a maximally flat passband, Chebyshev filters introduce ripples in the passband for a sharper roll-off. Higher-order Chebyshev filters achieve a steeper roll-off for the same filter order compared to Butterworth filters, making them more selective. To design a Chebyshev filter, we calculate specific G parameters. G0 and Gn plus 1 relate to source and load impedance. Gk, calculated based on filter order and ripple specifications. These parameters are derived using trigonometric and hyperbolic functions. In this example, we set up the design of a third-order Chebyshev filter with a ripple factor of 0.5 dB and a cutoff frequency of 1 GHz. Using design equations, we calculate the necessary G parameters to meet these specifications. Through trigonometric and hyperbolic calculations, we determine that G1 equals 0.879, G2 equals 1.11, G3 equals 0.879. These values define the component values necessary for constructing our filter circuit. Using the calculated G parameters, we design the filter circuit with specific components. For example, we set L1 equals 6.92 nanohenries, C2 equals 3.53 picofarads, L3 equals 6.92 nanohenries, achieving the intended frequency response. To align the filter with system requirements, we apply frequency scaling to set the cutoff frequency to 1 GHz and impedance scaling to match the 50 ohm system impedance. After scaling, the Chebyshev filter has the following component values L1 equals L3, both equal to 6.92 nanohenries, C2 equals 3.53 picofarads. These values satisfy the ripple and cutoff frequency requirements for our design. The process for designing a Chebyshev filter includes defining the ripple and cutoff frequency calculating G parameters, applying frequency and impedance scaling, and constructing the circuit with these values. This section covers bandpass filter design using a Chebyshev response. Our objective is to create a third-order bandpass filter with a 0.5 dB ripple, a center frequency of 1 GHz, and a bandwidth of 1%. The design specifications for our Chebyshev bandpass filter include a 0.5 dB ripple, third-order configuration, center frequency at 1 GHz, and a 1% bandwidth within a 50 ohm system. To create the bandpass filter, we start with a low pass prototype and transform each component. Each inductor becomes a series LC combination, 
while each capacitor becomes a parallel LC combination. In the transformation, L1 becomes L1 prime and C1 prime in series. C2 becomes L2 prime and C2 prime in parallel, adjusting the circuit's frequency response. Component values are calculated as follows: L1 prime equals L1 times Z naught over omega naught times delta. C1 prime equals delta over omega naught times L1 times Z naught, where omega naught is the center angular frequency and delta is the bandwidth factor. Using a bandwidth factor of 0.01 for 1% bandwidth, center frequency F naught equals 1 gigahertz, which implies omega naught equals 2 pi times 10 to the 9th. Calculate L1 prime, C1 prime, L2 prime, and C2 prime based on G parameters and scaling. After calculations, the final values for our bandpass filter are L1 prime equals 127 nanohenries, C1 prime equals 0.199 picofarads, L2 prime equals 0.725 nanohenries, C2 prime equals 34.9 picofarads. To ensure accuracy, we use a circuit simulator to verify the design. The transfer function confirms the bandpass response centered at 1 GHz with the specified bandwidth. To summarize, the design process involves creating a low-pass prototype, applying transformations, scaling for frequency and impedance, and verifying with simulation. In this lecture, we'll compare Butterworth and Chibushev filter designs. Butterworth filters provide a maximally flat response with no ripples in the passband, while Chibushev filters allow ripples in the passband but achieve a sharper roll-off. Choosing between these filter types impacts the required order for achieving specific roll-off characteristics. Filter order is key in determining the roll-off rate. A higher order filter results in a steeper roll-off. For Butterworth filters, Achieving a sharper roll-off requires a larger filter order. In contrast, Chibushev filters can achieve the same roll-off with a lower filter order, thanks to the ripple introduced in the passband. In this example, we'll design a filter with a roll-off of negative 30 decibels at omega over omega c equals 1.2. The objective is to determine the filter order required for both Butterworth and Chibushev filters to meet this specification. For the Butterworth filter, we start by converting minus 30 dB to a linear scale. 10 to the power of negative 30 divided by 10 equals 0.001. The required transfer function is 1 over 1 plus the quantity omega over omega c raised to the power 2n, which equals 0.001. Solve for n to find the order. n is approximately 19. For the Chibushev filter with a 1 dB ripple, set the ripple factor L R equal to 1 decibel. Calculate F not approximately 0.2589 for this ripple. Solving for N gives us an order of approximately 8, significantly lower than that of the Butterworth filter. In this comparison, we find that the Butterworth filter requires an order of 19 for the desired roll-off, while the Chibushev filter requires an order of only 8. This lower order means the Chibushev filter needs fewer components, resulting in a more compact and efficient design, though it introduces ripples in the passband. Adjusting the ripple factor in Chibushev filters further affects the required filter order. For example, increasing the ripple to 3 dB allows a further reduction in filter order, providing a sharper roll-off with fewer components. However, higher ripple factors result in a less flat passband, creating a trade-off between roll-off sharpness and passband flatness. Here's an example Chibushev filter design with an order of 8. This configuration includes 8 reactive elements significantly reducing the size and complexity compared to a Butterworth filter that would require 19 elements. Chibushev filters offer key advantages due to their efficiency. They require fewer components than Butterworth filters to achieve the same roll-off rate. Additionally, the ripple factor can be adjusted to tailor performance, making Chibushev filters both compact and versatile. To summarize, Butterworth filters provide a smooth passband response but require a higher order to achieve sharp roll-off. Chibushev filters achieve similar roll-off with fewer components by allowing passband ripple, and adjusting the ripple factor can further optimize component usage, making them ideal for applications where compact, efficient designs are a priority.
This lecture introduces stepped impedance filters, a design technique involving alternating sections of high and low impedance. Stepped impedance filters are commonly used to create low-pass characteristics in transmission line filters, making them especially valuable in printed circuit designs. The concept of translating lumped components into transmission line equivalents simplifies fabrication. Here, inductors are replaced with short-circuited transmission lines, while capacitors are represented by open-circuited lines, making the design more practical for printed circuit layouts. A stepped impedance filter alternates between high and low impedance sections, with high impedance sections representing inductive components and low impedance sections representing capacitive components. This structure mimics the behavior of lumped LC filters. To design a fourth-order low-pass filter, we start with alternating high and low impedance sections and ensure that the filter is terminate with the system's characteristic impedance, Z0. The key parameters in designing stepped impedance filters are ZH for inductive sections, ZL for capacitive sections. We use impedance values and electrical length to approximate each section's behavior effectively. To analyze the filter's performance, we calculate the ABCD parameters for each transmission line section. A equals D, both equal to cosine of beta L. B equals J Z naught times sine of beta L. C equals J Y naught times sine of beta L. These parameters are derived from transmission line theory and are essential for understanding filter response. When replacing an inductor with a transmission line section, approximate using a high impedance transmission line, ZH, with a short length. It's important to keep beta L below pi slash 2 to retain inductive behavior in the transmission line. Similarly, capacitors are represented by low impedance transmission lines, use low impedance, ZL, to mimic capacitive behavior. By setting beta L within specific limits, we can ensure that the line exhibits capacitive behavior, effectively replacing a capacitor in the design. The transformation equations guiding this design process are X equals ZH times beta L for high impedance sections or inductors. B equals YL times beta L for low impedance sections or capacitors. These equations are essential for selecting the correct impedance and electrical length for each section. To summarize, stepped impedance filters alternate between high and low impedance sections to replicate the behavior of lumped LC filters. High impedance sections act as inductors, while low impedance sections function as capacitors. The transformation equations provide guidelines for determining the impedance and length for each section, ensuring the filter achieves the desired low-pass characteristics. This lecture covers the design process for a stepped impedance low-pass filter. Our objective is to create a low-pass filter using the stepped impedance method, with a Butterworth response and a cutoff frequency of 2.5 GHz. The design specifications for this filter include a cutoff frequency of 2.5 GHz, an insertion loss of over 20 dB at 4 GHz, a system impedance of 50 ohms, a maximum realizable impedance of 120 ohms, and a minimum realizable impedance of 20 ohms. To determine the required filter order, n, we use the formula n equals log of 10 to the power of PLR over 10 minus 1, divided by 2 times log of omega over omega c. A power loss ratio, or PLR, of 20 decibels translates to 10 to the power of PLR over 10, equal to 100. Given parameters yield an estimated filter order of n equals 6. For a Butterworth response, we need the G parameters of a sixth order filter. These values are G1 equals 0.517, G2 equals 1.414, G3 equals G4, both equal to 1.932, G5 equals 1.414, G6 equals 0.517. These G parameters shape the filter's response to achieve a maximally flat passband. In our design, inductors are represented by high impedance lines, with ZH equal to 120 ohms. Calculate the electrical length, beta L, for each inductor using the formula. Beta L equals GK times Z naught over ZH times 180 degrees over pi. For example, with G1 equal to 0.517, beta L equals 11.8 degrees. Capacitors are represented by low impedance lines, with ZL equal to 20 ohms. Calculate the electrical length, beta L, for each capacitor using the formula. 
beta L equals GK times ZL over Z0 times 180 degrees over pi. For example, with G2 equal to 1.414, beta L equals 32.4 degrees. Once the design is complete, we verify the filter using software, such as CST or ADS. The simulation should confirm a cutoff frequency at 2.5 GHz and an insertion loss greater than 20 dB at 4 GHz, ensuring the design meets our specifications. To summarize, we designed a sixth-order stepped impedance filter with a Butterworth response, calculated the appropriate G parameters, mapped inductors and capacitors to transmission lines with high and low impedances, and verified the design using simulation for the specified cutoff and insertion loss. This lecture introduces coupled line filters which use pairs of transmission lines to achieve specific filtering effects. We'll explore the underlying mathematics of even and odd modes and coupled lines, essential for understanding the unique behavior of these filters. Setup for a coupled line filter. Ports are defined as 1, 2, 3, and 4 with respective currents I1, I2, I3, and I4. Voltages at each port are labeled V1, V2, V3, and V4. Current directions differ in even and odd modes, which affects impedance. Impedance definitions. Even mode impedance is ZOE. Odd mode impedance is ZOO. Even modes have currents flowing in the same direction, while odd modes have opposing currents, creating distinct impedance and voltage profiles for each mode. For a bandpass response, we can open circuit terminals 2 and 4. This configuration supports bandpass behavior, with the transmission line starting at L equals 0 and extending along the Z direction, defining the filter's passband characteristics. We can define current equations in terms of even and odd modes. I underscore 1 equals I underscore 1 plus I underscore 2 for even mode and I underscore 3 equals I underscore 3 I underscore 4 for odd mode. These equations form the basis for calculating input impedance under different excitations. In even mode, the input impedance is calculated as Z and equals negative J Z O E times cotangent of beta L, where Z O E is the even mode impedance. Beta is the propagation constant. Voltage across the transmission line in even mode. VA of Z equals VB of Z. This voltage symmetry results from common excitation, providing uniform voltage behavior along the line. Input impedance in odd mode. Z in equals JZOO times cotangent of beta L, where ZOO is the odd mode impedance. Voltages VA of Z and VB of Z are opposite in odd mode. For each port's total voltage, V1 equals VA of 0, plus VA of 2, plus VA of 3, plus VA of 4. The sum of voltages at all ports in both modes provides the total voltage response. This combined response incorporates both even and odd mode voltages for a complete analysis. Using calculated currents and voltages, the impedance matrix is derived. This matrix is key to developing the coupling behavior of the filter. To summarize, the essential parameters in coupled line filter design include even and odd mode impedances, voltage symmetry in even mode, and anti-symmetry in odd mode. The derived impedance matrix enables the development of effective coupled line filters with precise control over frequency response. This lecture covers Richard's transformation, a method used to translate lumped element filters into microwave-friendly designs. Richard's transformation enables us to represent inductors and capacitors using transmission line equivalents, making it ideal for high-frequency applications. Lumped element filters face limitations at microwave frequencies. Inductors and capacitors become difficult to implement at higher frequencies, and components need to be sized on the order of the wavelength. This makes traditional lumped designs impractical for microwave frequencies. A transmission line with characteristic impedance Z0 and length I can be terminated with load impedance ZL. The input impedance Z in at one end can be expressed as Z in equals Z0 times the fraction ZL plus JZ0 times tangent of beta L over Z0 plus JZL times tangent of beta L.
when ZL equals zero or short-circuited. Z in equals J Z naught times tangent of beta L. This behaves like an inductive reactance similar to J omega L. This configuration can represent inductors using short-circuited transmission lines. When ZL equals infinity or open-circuited, Z in equals negative J Z naught times cotangent of beta L. This behaves like a capacitive reactance similar to negative J over omega C. This configuration can represent capacitors using open-circuited transmission lines. Richard's transformation provides a way to replace frequency omega with a transmission line equivalent, expressed as omega tan beta L. This transformation allows inductors and capacitors to be replaced with transmission line sections, ideal for microwave frequencies. To summarize the transmission line equivalents, inductors are represented by short-circuited transmission lines, while capacitors are represented by open-circuited lines. The characteristic impedance Z underscore zero relates directly to the inductance or capacitance values, enabling microwave-compatible designs. Example of converting a lumped inductor. Given L, find Z naught for the transmission line equivalent. Use the equation Z naught equals L over tangent of beta L for a short-circuited line. In Richard's transformation, normalization is set at a frequency where tan beta L equals 1, which corresponds to beta L equals pi slash 4. This normalized frequency ensures that transmission line lengths accurately represent lumped element values. To summarize, Richard's transformation enables us to convert lumped LC filters into transmission line equivalents for high-frequency applications. This approach uses short and open-circuited lines to represent inductors and capacitors, making microwave filter designs more practical by avoiding reliance on impractically sized lumped elements. In this section, we'll demonstrate the design of a low-pass Butterworth filter using the step impedance method in Keysight Genesis. We begin by right-clicking on Design, selecting Synthesis and then Microwave Filters. In options we check create a layout. We set options for discontinuity and select the transmission line and substrate. We choose microstrip line in Rogers 320360 mil for our substrate. To achieve a sharp roll off in frequency response, we set the filter order to 19. Next, we select Optimize to refine the structure.
we add the layout and connect the necessary parts. Then we set up momentum design for full wave simulation to ensure our design matches the simulated performance. We add plots of the return loss and transmission coefficient for the momentum simulation. The results show that the design and simulation align well. Finally, we view the 3D electric field distributions at different frequencies. We see that at high frequencies, wave propagation is blocked, while at low frequencies, the filter allows the waves to pass. In this section we'll demonstrate the design of a Chibushef bandpass filter using the coupled line method. We start by creating a microwave filter. Selecting bandpass Chibushef filter and edge coupled filter. In options, we set the filter order to 8 and define the frequency band from 2000 to 300 MHz. Next, we select the substrate for our design.
we then optimize the structure. After that, we set up momentum analysis and compare the initial results. We observe that the results of the full wave simulation do not match perfectly. To improve accuracy, we rerun the optimization this time using full wave momentum simulations. Finally, we achieve a reasonable response that meets our design specifications. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel for more content on filter design and microwave engineering. See you in the next video.